Hi, this is Bruce, and I thought I would make a quick video on uh, color correction in Final Cut Pro 10. And these principles should work just as well in Adobe Premiere. One of the things I like about a professional level uh, video editor is what's called scopes that come with the software. Premiere has them, Final Cut Pro has them, Sony Vegas has them. A lot of them have, have them in a pro level video editor. Now, I as a disclaimer, I'm not a professional colorist. I'm not a professional video editor. I'm just showing you my workflow in correcting color and getting the best possible image I can to my audience on YouTube. And I've broke it down to a five step process that I hope you find useful. So let's get started. And here is an image from a prior YouTube uh, video that I made a while back. And uh, this is uh, shot in uh, actually 4K, but I put it into a 1080p timeline. But if we look at the image, we see that the wall, which should be just, it is a white, is kind of an antique white, so uh, it's not bright white, but this is very clearly got a lot of yellow in it. The skin tones also seem to have a bit too much yellow in it, and it sort of has a washed out look. So the first steps that I'm going to take is work on the exposure of the video. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up two things. I'm going to pull up my, my color board, and then I'm going to pull up my scopes. I'm going to go ahead and make these a little bit larger so for demonstration. Come on, there we go. And the first thing I'm going to do going to make sure that I go to waveform and I select Luma and with that this is the Luma on here and basically it goes from 0 to 100 and 0 is going to be your blacks okay that's going to be all your dark dark stuff the at 100 that's going to be all your white so or highlights I should say so these are your highlights, and then in between is going to be your midtones. So it's your blacks, your grays, and your whites. And that's what we're going to adjust uh, kind of quickly here. Make sure that that's all uh, looking good. And the first thing that I do when I go to start adjusting these is I go over to the saturation. It's a little trick that I learned somewhere, I guess, off of watching YouTube videos on this. And I'm going to totally desaturate the image. And so we've gotten rid of all the color now. Now everything's in black and white. And what we want is we want the midtones not to exceed about 75 on there. And that is, uh, so that is me on there. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, just, there we go. You can see as I'm talking on the video, you can see the, uh, you can see that, yeah, that's me right there at the 75. And that's where I want to be on there. So that's actually looking pretty good. And you see just a little bit of over on that, but that's um, probably right and through here on the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to increase the highlights uh, on the exposure. I'm going to go over to exposure. I'm going to work on the highlights. I'm actually going to bring this up just slightly, just a little bit there to so where that edge is touching. And I'm going to bring the midtones down just ever slightly. And then I'm going to work on the shadows. And this is where you can, it's because you're doing a YouTube video and you're not doing broadcast stuff, it's okay to, if you want to crush your blacks a little bit, and I do, I just want to crush it down a little bit or the shadows. There we go. And I think that looks pretty good. Now if I go back to saturation and there, restore it back. Now we've got... Uh, we have the Luma or the exposure set where we want it at. So the idea is you don't want your highlights generally to exceed 100. You don't want your shadows to come below 100. And you want to keep uh, your midtones, your people, if you will, around about that 75% mark. And that will give you basically pretty good exposure. Now the big issue that I'm dealing with in this image is the white balance which is was off on the camera even though I use a, um, a white uh, a, you know, it's like a little white card that you shoot to set your balance uh, no matter what I seem to get a little bit too much yellow in my image 
So what I'm going to do now is this is a very important scope to use. I'm going to drop down in here and I'm going to choose the RGB parade on my scopes. And I still have my color board up here. And you can see that the reds and the greens look about right. They're equal to one another. But what we're lacking is a lot of blue right there. So now I'm going to go over to the color wheel or the color board, I should say. And we're going to grab the highlights because that's where we're lacking as in the highlights. And we're going to move that over into the blues a little bit. And then we're going to just gently pull that up to where now they match. And I think that looks pretty good right there. So now you can see that although the wall is not exactly white, it is an antique white. That looks a lot better. Uh, so you just want to be careful not to put too much blue or go over there because then you would start getting, it just wouldn't look right. The other thing you want to check is in your shadows and everything looks pretty good. We might have just a smidge too much red in the shadows and we can correct that by going over to the color board. We can click on shadows. We can take it all over to red and we can just gently pull that up a little bit and you, there we go just a little bit not too much and I think that looks really really good so I'm pretty pleased with that so the next correction I want to make is dealing with skin tone and to do that I'm going to use two different tools and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a tool called the vector scope and the vector scope is a wheel it shows you all the different colors, your reds, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellows. And this is called the skin tone line right there. So you want your, your flesh tones to fall right on that. And uh, the way that I, I kind of work on that is I'm going to go down to the effects and I'm going to pull up the um, draw mask. So I'm pulling up the draw mask right now. I'm going to drop it onto my timeline and then I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to work on those, bring those around and just, I'm, that's all I'm doing is I'm just masking off the flesh tones right here and I'm looking at it and that now just puts everything, eliminates all the other things other than my skin tones right on the skin tone line. It's actually there, it might just be a little bit too much yellow. So I'm going back to my color board. I'm going to click on the midtones. I'm going to bring that over to the yellows. You see if I move that around. There we go. And now we're just going to bring it right, right on there. Perfect. And so now all I got to do is go back to the uh, inspector on here. Go to video. And then all I got to do is just uncheck the draw mask and I'm pretty uh, happy with that. So using a combination of the draw mask and the vector scope is uh, really, really important if you want to get proper looking skin tones because this will actually tell you if you got too much yellow, too much red um, or where you're lacking in your skin tones. The next thing I like to do is give my video a little bit of pop. And that's kind of a simple one. So I'm going to go back to the color board again. I'm going to go click on saturation. And I'm just, this is the global um, control on here. I can increase saturation in the, again in the highlights, the midtones, or the whites, the grays, and blacks. But I'm going to do a global on here. And I'm going to raise that up by about 9%. And I'm going to leave it about right there. And that gives the video a lot more pop. And uh, the final thing that I'm is that uh, I'm going to kind of look over the image there, make sure everything looks pretty pretty good. I might have crushed the blacks a little bit too much, so I'm just going to pop back over to the uh, oh, the exposure here. I went the wrong way. Go back to exposure, the the shadows, and I'm just going to raise those up just a little bit. There we go. That way we can pick up a little bit more detail. If you crush them too much, you're going to lose detail. And I think that looks really, really good. And the, the very last step for me is to go back into my effects and I am going to choose sharpen. So I'm going to clear that out and I'm going to find my sharpen 
effect, drop it on there, and I'm going to go back to the inspector video. And in the sharpen, this setting uh, 2.5 isn't bad. I choose, I normally work with 2.7. And then that gives me uh, just a little bit more detail. It's important not to over sharpen an image because things just don't look right. So now I'm going to go back, I'm going to check my work. This is before and this is after. Before and after. And that image now looks a whole lot better. Uh, in my eyes. So this is a five-step process. Again, adjust your exposure, correct your white balance, check your skin tones, apply saturation, and then add a little bit of sharpening, and you'll have a really, really nice image on there. Like I said, I'm not a professional at this. This is just what I learned. This is my workflow. So look forward to your comments down below. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody.